The Hall of Mental Cultivation became the center of power after the reign of the Emperor Kangxi. The mere mention of the name of this imperial residence is enough to make people yearn for it. Sadly, for the time being, visitors must remain outside and rely on their imaginations for a sense of what went on here. <笑>我不知道希望吧现在还看不出来是嘉靖那一年的哈应该是十四然后这是个四然后但是我们就是想亲亲这一片但是这一片感觉不一定能亲得出来在明石路里边它那个档案记载的是嘉靖十六年新作
Wong Hui and Zhang Dian come to the Hall of Mental Cultivation almost every day. The grand restoration of the Hall of Mental Cultivation might be extremely challenging, but it's also a process that's endlessly engaging and full of surprises. The rear hall is the emperor's bedroom. As the restoration proceeded, they discovered something, something that even the emperor himself didn't know about. Someone dared to trick the All Highest, the Emperor himself. The workers discovered this secret after they removed this part of the roof. The structure of the paraboloid gable roof of the rear hall has been greatly simplified, not in line with the engineering standards of the time at all. Brick, stone, tile, and wood make up the bulk of traditional Chinese architecture. The restoration has been underway for over a year, and the technicians of the Department of Construction Management have checked more than 100,000 tiles from the Hall of Mental Cultivation. They have recorded and made rubbings of over 10,000 tiles with inscriptions. These inscriptions provide a unique perspective on the Hall of Mental Cultivation, both past and present. They found that most tiles with inscriptions on the roof of the Hall of Mental Cultivation were made around 1799, the fourth year of the Jia Qing reign. Why didn't the Jia Qing Emperor prepare the Hall of Mental Cultivation and move in as soon as he ascended the throne? Because in his first four years as the Emperor, he had no right to live in his own palace. In 1796, the Qianlong Emperor officially passed the throne to Jia Qing. However, this Grand Emperor didn't go to his luxurious secret garden to live out the rest of his life, as he publicly claimed. His lust for power was so strong that it even overcame his desire for rest and retirement. So even after his abdication, Qianlong continued to live in the Hall of Mental Cultivation, retaining imperial power firmly in his own hands. For more than three years, Jia Qing had no choice but to live under the shadow of his father, 
even though he was the true emperor. In the fourth year of the Jiaqing reign, Qianlong passed away. The new emperor was finally able to move into the Hall of Mental Cultivation. The long-suppressed Jiaqing emperor instantly arrested Huo Shen, his father's favorite minister, and didn't wait for a second to renovate the Hall of Mental Cultivation. Zheng Dian's rubbings of all the tiles made during this period bear witness to the 40-year-old emperor's joy and ambition. Today, an in-wall pillar of the West Hall of the Hall of Mental Cultivation poses a problem for the Department of Construction Management's restoration work. The initial survey shows that the interior of this pillar is badly decayed. But if they want to replace the whole pillar, they'll have to demolish the entire wall around it. The consequences of the slightest mistake could be dire. There's nothing easy about restoring ancient buildings. Wood always decays with the passage of time, and the rot often starts from within. To deal with this problem, the Department of Construction Management has brought in specialist consultants. As well as strictly adhering to engineering standards, the ancient builders also tried their best to avoid waste. So though the cracked timbers cannot serve as beams, they can still be used as pillars. Every piece of wood in these ancient buildings tells its own story in a voice that only those with enough knowledge and experience can hear and understand. Li Yonggu, a representative of the third generation of carpenters in the Palace Museum, has participated in almost every grand restoration since the 1980s. It's 30 years since he was first involved in restoring the Hall of Mental Cultivation. He's one of the few who can hear the voice of the wood and the stories it tells. The Department of Construction Management attaches great importance to the experience accumulated by previous craftsmen. Ever since the start of the Hall of Mental Cultivation Restoration Project, they've called on the wisdom and expertise of veteran craftsmen. Yeah,挖不过。挖也挖不过。对对对,过去这个,这院子不是你看房上也修了。房下也修了。对,这人过去说那个叫是,呃,干千年,十万年,不是不干就八年。就八年。所以就是,就是一沤。慢慢就坏
Now, he is passing on his accumulated experience to the younger generation of craftsmen in the Palace Museum. This is how the restoration of ancient buildings works. Generations of Palace Museum craftsmen have contributed to the grand restoration of the Hall of Mental Cultivation. At the request of the Department of Construction Management, an expert group from Beijing Forestry University brought a set of equipment to the Hall of Mental Cultivation to measure the degree of decay of the pillar more precisely. This device can detect the degree of decay in cross sections of timber in a minimally invasive way. It's a bit like giving the timber a CT scan. The first few waveform graphs show that the pillar is highly likely to be completely decayed. Replacement is the only option. At Zheng Dian's insistence, the team added a sampling point at a higher location. The new scan shows that the upper part of the pillar still can bear the weight, making it possible to restore it by replacing the rotten lower part alone. Thus, part of the original wood and the history attached to it can be preserved in this restoration. With the weather turning cooler and becoming unsuitable for plaster work, the Department of Construction Management opts to put off actual restoration of the pillar until spring. For now, they'll gather the materials needed for the work. A day in the Hall of Mental Cultivation starts at the Gate of Divine Prowess. Every morning, restoration workers enter the palace through here. Although the restoration of the in-wall pillar won't start until next year, other work in the Hall of Mental Cultivation is already underway. By taking measurements of detailed records of the Hall of Mental Cultivation, the researchers create kind of a medical record for the palace. Yang老师他们在底下呢，他们啊啊啊，我看不见你，啊，你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你
，别看了，都不敢来实习了。你像那个我们今天做的那个是船子的分型分式，二十二是第二种。如果是一批做出来的船子的话，它的这个做法应该都是一样的，所以我们会综合这些各种细节，然后再结合文献、结合图档，分析它的这个修缮，就是就是一个建筑的成长史。More than 300 years ago, a foreigner who shared a common interest with today's researchers in ancient buildings left us a precious record. In 1690, the French missionary Jean-Francois Gobillon was invited to come to the Hall of Mental Cultivation to teach Emperor Kongxi mathematics. At that time, the Hall of Mental Cultivation was the imperial workshop and he recorded this interesting account of the craftsman in his diary. We were led to a place in the palace called the Hall of Mental Cultivation, where some of the most skilled craftsmen, such as painters, carpenters, goldsmiths, and coppersmiths, were working. He also noted that the emperor had a strong interest in craftsmanship as well, sometimes coming here especially to watch the craftsmen work. Ventilated bricks are another ingenious invention pioneered by ancient craftsmen. The hollowed out brick can let the air flow through it, keeping the in wall wooden pillars dry and reducing the possibility of decay. Two years ago, the ventilated bricks of the West Hall gave a special gift to the Palace Museum. In January 2019, when they were checking the ventilated bricks of the outer walls of the West Hall, they accidentally found a playbill that was over 100 years old. It records the program and cast list of a New Year opera performance in the Forbidden City in the mid to late Qing Dynasty. This discovery is of great value to historians of palace opera. So, when we were at the time, we were also at the time, and we were also at the time to look at the Zhu Ge's face. And when we opened it, there were two pieces of paper in a small piece of paper. It was so long, right? 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 手里边难累了，说那个细折已经演完戏了，没用了，就从就从这儿就给塞里边去了呗。嗯，这一塞就是这一百多年。这个就跟那个漂流瓶那作用似的，漂流瓶扔海里边去了，谁捞上来谁看。就这个就是将来谁打开了谁看，也可能几十年上百年了都是啊。While the Hall of Mental Cultivation is under grand restoration, the survey and restoration of other palaces is also being carried out. The buildings themselves are the most important objects in the Palace Museum collection. These people walking around in the Forbidden City are from the management office of the Department of Ancient Buildings. Day after day, they meticulously record every problem, major or minor, to be found in the ancient buildings and make restoration plans accordingly. Just每年要查一次，对对，查到这么多的点位啊。今年电子系统这一块是查了六千多个点，六千二百多个点。然后就是这么大量的这个检测的这个点位的，之间都是拿那个大的A3纸啊，然后再去人工的记，然后就现在
啊不不啊对，仙人也缺的啊，像两个四个，加上那个门四，那门也没有。啊，上面那个正脊那一块吧，那也那也缺一块。对，盖脊瓦也缺一块。你看兽脚，它不规则的还是挺多的。你看像这个兽脚不也是吗？越是这样的地儿越好，跟你说。怕磕磕磕磕着碰着。对对对，这俩我想拿一个人像拍一下。人像，太没意思。这个这个天儿冷了，多穿点。对。让仙人，让仙人冲镜头笑一个。就站着去，小鹿就这样，生气。Only one stop is left in the architectural inspection. Chi Fei and her colleagues come to a closed area. There's a fantastic building here. They are about to restart a restoration project that was put on hold due to the epidemic. Numinous Firmament Treasure Hall is the place where Taoist activities were held in the imperial palaces of the Ming and Qing dynasties, and the main deity is Emperor Hao Tian. In the Qing dynasty, the Xianfeng Emperor once came here to pray for snow. The Xuancheng Gate is the last guard leading to this palace, but after hundreds of years of erosion, it's not as strong as it used to be. 这其实这大多数还是在的，对，但有就多久没到没到这儿了？就疫情之间就没进来。对，疫情有多长？他们就在这儿有多久？他们在冷宫里。然后我下去。我来人给你拿。哦，要点点点，跟他说一声。The problem with the Xianchong Gate is this rotten beam. Wood, the most important material used in traditional Chinese buildings, is constantly exposed to lightning, decay, insect damage, and other destructive forces. Wow, this building is so beautiful. This building has a light source. This building has a light source. This building has a light source. 放口袋了，这是抱下来的。多帮我拿一个。People are often faced with a dilemma when dealing with decayed wood components. From a functional point of view, the new wood has much better load-bearing capacity, but from the point of view of heritage conservation, it's important to preserve as much of the original material as possible. The Department of Ancient Buildings decided to keep the intact part of the timber and fill in the missing parts with new strips of wood. This wooden beam contains both old and new wood, and will continue to support the glazed decorations of the Xuancheng Gate. The date on the timber will provide invaluable information for the next generation of restorers. However, Chi Fei hopes that this kind of information will not be necessary. 就是没有问题就一定不用动，有问题就一定会动。就让它封存在里头吧。Unlike the wooden beam of the Xuancheng Gate, there was no question at all that this completely rotten timber would have to be replaced. Originally, it was located at the uppermost part of the main hall of the Hall of Mental Cultivation, enjoying a prominent position and an important function as a ridge mounting beam. In order to waterproof the roof of the traditional buildings, there are multiple lines of defense. What we can normally see are the ridges and tiles. 
Underneath them, there's a thick waterproof layer made of oil-based mortar. Supporting the waterproof layer is a wooden structure consisting of roof boarding, rafters, and purlins. The rafters are fixed on top of the highest large wooden component of the building, the ridge mounting beam. It is this complex structure that allows the palace to be totally waterproof. The numerous imperial projects of the Ming Dynasty consumed almost all of golden silk nanmu wood in China. This precious wood takes several hundred years to grow. When the emperors of the Qing Dynasty wanted to restore the palace, they could find no golden silk nanmu, so they had no choice but to use a different type of wood. This ridge-mounting beam in the Hall of Mental Cultivation was put here during a restoration, and it's made of pine. In accordance with the principles of restoration, the Department of Construction Management needs to replace it with new timber of exactly the same species and texture. Ever since the Qing Dynasty, there have been logging camps around Beijing capable of supplying timber for palaces. The selected pine has been roughly processed and will be shipped to the Palace Museum tonight. Due to the restrictions on traffic within Beijing's second ring road, the driver, Mr. Meng, needs to wait outside the third ring road till 11 p.m. and spend another 30 minutes to finish the second half of the journey. After unloading the truck full of wood, Mr. Meng will drive out through the gate of divine prowess and go home, the end of just another normal working day. But the wood he brought in today will stay on the roof of the Hall of Mental Cultivation for more than 100 years. A great part of the charm of time is that while it demolishes almost everything, it often preserves the most beautiful things. The color paintings on the ridges and purlins of the roof of the Hall of Mental Cultivation were briefly revealed thanks to the replacement of the ridge mounting beam. It is speculated that during the Jiajing reign, the Hall of Mental Cultivation was the place where the emperor who had a keen interest in immortality, held religious activities. The first emperor to use the Hall of Mental Cultivation as a residence was probably the Wan Li Emperor of the Ming Dynasty. He lived here for almost 30 years, rarely ever leaving. The 15th year of the Wan Li reign is famous for many reasons, not least the number of important events that happened that year. But few people realize that they were brought about by an emperor who rarely ventured beyond the confines of his own palace. What's more, for over 30 years, he didn't even attend the imperial court. What exactly did he do in the Hall of Mental Cultivation? So far, historians remain divided on this issue. But architectural experts have already mastered the wooden structure of the Ridge Mountain Beam of the Hall of Mental Cultivation where he lived buildings are always much easier to understand than people. The ridge mounting beams of the main hall of the Hall of Mental Cultivation are connected by dovetails. This special type of mortise and tenon 
can withstand the lateral tension and fasten all the ridge mounting beams together, giving the roof a more stable structure. The fabrication and installation of the ridge mounting beams is all done by hand. In the absence of modern lifting facilities, for hundreds of years, craftsmen relied on human muscle power to assemble and install these huge timbers. After the new and old dovetails were locked in place, the workers used the old nails to fix up other wood components. The color paintings are hidden again. Maybe they'll need to wait for the next restoration before they see the light of day again. Wang Hui is on shift tonight. With the onset of colder weather, restoration work on the Hall of Mental Cultivation is drawing towards a temporary stop. These little people are doing very nice. Yes, yes. This is a little bit of 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 a People who've never been here have all sorts of ideas about what this place is like when darkness comes. Imagination and mystery permeates every corner. In fact, nights in the Palace Museum are often lively and busy. Sometimes there's more activity here than there is in the daytime. Over the course of 600 years, how many such nights has the Forbidden City experienced?
Tonight, the construction party has asked permission for two trucks to come into the Palace Museum to remove the debris generated by their work. In the early morning, the traces of last night's work has been cleaned up. The sun shines on every inch of the Palace Museum. The Meridian Gate is open, welcoming tourists from all over the world. Before the suspension of the Grand Restoration for the duration of winter, the roof tiles of the Hall of Mental Cultivation will be relayed. This after restoring the wooden components and taking rubbings of the inscriptions, the intact tiles are put back in their positions. The inscriptions on their backs are hidden again, waiting for the future restorers to find them. As for these broken tiles and bricks that didn't survive the test of time, they will be properly stored in the warehouse. The tiles were made from clay, fired, then used by people to keep out the wind and rain. In the Forbidden City, the golden glazed tiles are for protecting the wooden roofs and eaves and present the most brilliant colors. In order to find the best glazed tiles to replace the broken ones, the Department of Construction Management visited many places in China where traditional glaze firing techniques are still in use. 300 kilometers away, fire and earth are creating miracles together. As the flame goes out and the clay hardens, the tiles are finished. In the Ming Dynasty, the glaze firing techniques in Shanxi were as famous as Jing Du Jin porcelain. When building the Forbidden City, the three main glaze firing families in Shanxi all participated in it. However, the glaze firing techniques used in this workshop in Shuozhou come from Beijing. In the Yuan Dynasty, the government specially set up a bureau of glaze in Mentou Go in Beijing to provide glaze tiles for the imperial family. In the Ming and Qing dynasties, a lot of glaze tiles in the Forbidden City were made here. Now, they're set to become the youngest glazed tiles on the roof of the Hall of Mental Cultivation. For them, the test of time has only just begun. On the roofs are stunning examples of glazework. Few people know the names of all these beasts. 
They only know that the word five ridges and six beasts is used to describe a loafer, an idle person. In fact, each of them has a unique mission. Some put out fire. Some ensure auspiciousness. Some are fierce guards. And some are the embodiment of justice. What's for sure is that roof charms have been guarding these ancient palaces tirelessly, day and night, for centuries. With the successful completion of the work on the roof of the Hall of Mental Cultivation, the shelter that has been here for more than 500 days finally starts coming down. Now, the tiles and roof charms will once again be able to feel the wind and rain and see the light of day. According to historical records that are accessible today, of all the occupants of this imperial palace, only the last emperor, Ai Sin Jioro Pu Yi, ever went up onto the roof. It was the generations of craftsmen the ones who spent 600 years with these tiles and glaze works, who knew this place best of all. Six hundred years ago, the Forbidden City was completed in Beijing. Over the past six hundred years, countless brilliant craftsmen have come here from all around the country to keep this ancient building complex alive and healthy. People die, but palaces don't. The palaces get old, but new generations keep coming to aid them. Timbers from different years and craftsmen of different generations all strive to keep the unchanging appearance of the Forbidden City. Behind the everlasting splendor is an endless relay of people and materials, not to mention boundless love for the beauty of palace architecture.